Welcome to another episode of American Heroes Outdoors. On this episode, we head to Central South Dakota. On the way, we're gonna link up with David Huntemeyer as we have the opportunity to chase giant whitetail and muley bucks across the prairies of South Dakota on a private 8,000 acre ranch. We also highlight our next Shields hometown hero, Mike Hawkins from Northwest Iowa. It's gonna be a great show, stay tuned. American Heroes Outdoors shares the stories of our nation's true heroes. A documentation of journey, commitment, struggle, and healing. A glimpse into the sacrifice and bravery of our service men and women. This is American Heroes Outdoors. It's been awesome. I haven't seen that many bucks in one spot probably ever, let alone nice ones. And to be able to just sit and watch them kind of sparring with each other out on the hill is really cool. We're just kind of hanging out uh, central South Dakota. We got a nice lease out here that we uh, invited you guys out this year. Trying to do a little archery hunt. It's mid uh, mid October. The air is fresh. The deer are on there. Kind of that uh, that prequel to the rut. The land out here, I like it, is because it's wide open spaces. You can see for miles. I like doing what I do. It means a lot to me. It's not about me, it's about what I can do for other people. Uh, having Dave Huntemeyer out here actually was very nice because my, my family also has a lot of history with the military. It goes back to great-grandfather. Knowing that I could contribute to Dave and help him out on his adventure meant quite a bit to me. Just beautiful country out here, so having a good time driving around just chatting about hunting in the outdoors. Did find one bedded up in a draw. Because if you stay on the cow path too and come to the left a little bit, it'll it'd take out some of that wind problem. It actually started out as a good stock. We dropped down into this little riverbed that was dried up and followed that riverbed along until we got to a on, I'd say it was a cow path um, and then kind of worked up the cow path but then as we came over the rise you could tell it was sitting there looking right at us so well that ain't gonna work so back back down went back into the riverbed then kind of came around another bend then came from the top side and was going to come at it from the back side and uh, as we came up we knew where it was laying it was kind of in these tree areas but when I came at it from the front it looked like it was closer towards the draw than closer towards the tree. So as we stalked, um, I mean, beautiful stalk, came up over the top and just kept stalking. problem was is I went to where I thought it was instead of stopping and, and taking that wide look until it jumped up about 35 40 yards just kind of off to my backside on the right and did the well you guys had a nice stock but I'm out of here see ya I uh, it was a lot of things just kind of happened quick um, even if you think you might have might have goofed up a little bit it's all a lot of chance and and, and it's all perspective and you think you have a good idea of what might happen and it might throw a curveball at you and sit back, wait, watch them, let them, let them do what they're going to do and then try to make another move on them and, you know, try to, had, had assumptions of where they might be and, and the assumptions were, were pretty, pretty accurate and we just had to wait them out and had an idea in my head. I didn't want to say too much because you ended up over speaking. I think you just got to let it play out and just have a good, good spot opportunity. American Heroes Outdoors is brought to you by Skeeter Boats and Yamaha Outboards, Shields, 
Smoky Hills Outdoor Store and Ice Castle Fish Houses, Woodland Resort, Disabled American Veterans, Otter Tail Lakes Country, SNS Promotional Group, Innovative Sign and Graphics, and Base Camp Country Real Estate. the Sioux Falls Police Department for 25 years. Um, I worked with the K-9 unit. Um, I actually trained uh, dogs that ended up going all over the world. Uh, most of the dogs that I trained were bomb dogs. Um, I trained both dual purpose drug and apprehension and then bomb dogs. And that was right after 9-11 um, and bomb dogs were in huge demand. So I was training a lot of bomb dogs and at that time I actually handled a bomb dog. So we traveled a lot doing sweeps and all that and it was at that time too that I'd been on active duty um, in the Marine Corps for uh, four years. Uh, my father was a Marine. I don't talk about him a lot yeah. um, and he died about a year and a half ago after a hunt. You know, he was in the Marine Corps and you know, he didn't want to be like your dad. Uh, that's why I joined and as a matter of fact, I joined when I was 17, graduated from high school and went right to boot camp. And then I got out and went into the reserves and went to college and that's when I got hired with the police department. Um, after 9-11, I ended up back in the active reserves um, and at that point, then I got mobilized several times and spent a lot of, way, a lot of time from home and between both the Army and the Marine Corps, I've probably been to approximately 28 different countries around the world throughout a, almost to wrap up a 29 year career. So after I retired from the police department, I kind of the opportunity to take a job with the South Dakota Department of Veteran Affairs. And so now I'm a service officer and I help veterans with whatever they need, veterans and other military people. And um, I've lost seven friends to suicide. So. Anything we can do to help, we're, we're there to help. Biggest strategy is you sit back, you wait till the sun comes up, and and just just watch, pay attention, feel what the wind is doing, feel what the deer are doing, what their what their behavior is like. Is kind of kind of tell you how your day is going to go. And you just you just got to sit back and wait and relax and get a lay of the land. You know, if you're spotting stock and you can't just go dive in and, and start looking in every nook, every cranny, you know, it's, that's just way too much activity and get some kind of riled up. Wait till buck bedded down, pulled up to a new glassing area, found it. I just kind of make it a game plan down and we kind of got a southeast wind. Take it as slow as possible because there's probably deer in between here and there. Uh, we get there, we'll probably just wait him out until he stands and hopefully Dave can do the good deed. I oh, just got out of the truck. Uh, John and Dustin saw a couple white tail bucks and one looks like a shooter. So came back down into the yard and we're gonna work down into this draw and kind of work up on the east side of them and see if we can't wait a little bit and see if they get up. We got some customers over his shoulder too.
That's fun. Didn't go the way we wanted it to, but it's still a lot of fun. Had him at 60 yards, and uh, he sent it us. He came through right where we were supposed to be before we were there. That's why he's still alive. Kind of went accordingly, but uh, we just needed to be down here just a little bit sooner. Got up out his bed and came down the trail we were supposed to be sitting on. Came down to 66 yards, then to 50, and sent us and came right back up the trail we wish we were on. And as we was walking in, we seen a couple other bucks. Um, I think we'll get back in the pickup and hit another glass and hill and see what we can find and see what it brings us. We're sharing more stories on our social media pages. Shields Hometown Heroes, Sunday Service Spotlight, and more. Help us share more stories of our service men and women. My pager went off on my phone. I'm a volunteer firefighter. I've been on it for about 15 years now. Kind of a struggle once in a while, but it is what it is, and we'll see what happens. So we're in route on a fire call. We are in route to take a peek. Fire department means to me as a community. I can help the community out any way I can but it's more to be involved in the community, to help the community out, to help other people. I enjoy it. it if, if I ain't on the ground out here, I'd like to be in a fire truck, because I like fighting fires just as much as I do hunting. It tells me how many people are in route to the fire. Looks like they should have it under control. All right, we'll go find some more deer. Sounds good. The first time we saw them was in the morning, and there was a large group of them. And I'm not sure if these were part of that group, but they kind of broke up. And then when we worked back uh, later that afternoon, we saw the two laying down. So it looked like they weren't going to go too far. So that's when we came up with the decision, you know, let's work around the other side of the field and see if there was a little rise there also, and let's see if we can't come around. And then kind of low crawled through the prairie grass up to the top of the ridge. The wind was okay, and I, I don't think they really knew we were there, but something just wasn't right with them. So they stood up and they went across and then started working down this fence line into the southern grass area. So we thought, well, they didn't spook, they just kind of walked. So we'll work across the alfalfa field once they went behind the hill. Low crawled up until we got right on the ridge. Well, it worked out because from where we were at, there was a little rise that kind of hit us from them, and they were laying down right on the edge, right in that grass. And you know, so we couldn't even really see them. So we peek up a little bit, and you could see the antlers. So then we thought, well, let's sit and just wait till they stand up. But afterwards we found out we actually sat for about two, two and a half hours. A couple times it looked like they were gonna get up and then they didn't. After about, again, two, two and a half hours, the first one stood up and started working across to my left and it was, so it was crossing us. And it was at that time, so I drew while I was still kind of crouched and started to kneel up. Well, just as I kneel up and, and got to a full draw, then I could fully see the deer. He turned and saw me and let the arrow fly and flew true and actually ended up being a, a really good shot. Um, hit lung and heart and, and uh, the deer took off, turned and, and went to an open field about 200 yards and laid down and, and died right there. I was pretty excited, I'm not gonna lie. Um, that was, first of all, that was the first buck I've taken with my, my bow. Wow, shot a few does, but that was the first buck I've taken. And that was the largest buck that I've ever shot since I started hunting. Um, my heart was pretty much pounding. Wow, that was awesome. Holy cow, is that a deer? Couldn't stop looking at it. I mean, I'm, I'm still kind of giddy about it. It ended up being, 
super nice mule deer. Um, I couldn't ask for a better shot, couldn't ask for a better deer at that point. Unreal. Sometimes the stars will line up and uh, yeah, I overheard him say that that was his first buck with, with a bow. And he's been hunting for, I think he said between 40 and 45 years. So I think that was pretty, a pretty special deal to be, be around, let alone be involved with. So that was um, pretty, pretty excited, pretty proud, and pretty happy to be, be on this. I'm just almost without words. I mean, it couldn't have been a better day. The hunt was perfect. Everything went perfect. I mean, I, I could not have done it without everybody's help, without a doubt. I can't thank everybody enough. Interested in supporting our mission at American Heroes Outdoors? Go to AmericanHeroesOutdoors.com to nominate your very own hero or drop a donation to support our nation's true heroes. Welcome back to the show. And now it's time for our next Shields hometown hero, Mike Hawkins. Hi, I'm Dennis Stape with uh, Shields in Sioux City, Iowa. We're here tonight to present Mike Hawkins with uh, Shields hometown hero. And uh, we're gonna hook him up with uh, some good gifts and uh, we're excited to see Mike's reaction. Welcome to Shields Hometown Heroes. Shields Hometown Heroes is a way for us to say thanks to those that serve our country and our community. And are still giving back to others today. We honor your service by sharing your stories. From all of us at Shields, thank you for your service. We appreciate being involved with the Hometown Hero. And so, uh, heard a lot of really good things uh, about this individual. And the Shields Hometown Hero Award goes out to Mike Hawkins. Mike, come on up here, buddy. Come on up here. Mike, thank you. Yeah. And for you being such a great community member and supporter of the outdoors, uh, you know, it's everything that, that Shields believes in. Cascade, Iowa is where I grew up, over not too far from the Field of Dreams in Northeast Iowa, kind of in trout country. This was my first full-time job as a, in fisheries. I'd been working seasonal positions up until that point over in Northeast Iowa after college and got an opportunity to interview in, North, in Northwest Iowa, uh, out in the Glacial Lakes region. That led to a position here in our fisheries research section, studying natural lakes in the state of Iowa, and then eventually to the position I've got now. Our fisheries in Northwest Iowa has a direct correlation to Mike Hawkins and his staff. Because if you look at the pressure that this area has, and how this fishery sustains itself over time, it's unbelievable. So without the work that Mike is doing, and, and Kim too, his wife Kim at the hatchery, we're fortunate to have him. He, uh, can, he just knows the resource and he um, is just so passionate about the entire resource and, and in a holistic view, not just his little bubble here in Northwest Iowa. I think a lot of that comes from uh, my, my father, grandfather, um, family. Uh, they, they were definitely conservation oriented, talked a lot about soil health and respecting the landscape. Um, understanding the interaction between you know soil and, and water. I don't think he's driven by anything other than a desire to help his community. That's just the cool part of him. He's an unassuming guy. He doesn't reach out for praise or accolades, but he's just there for you. He moved up into the ranks of the fire department. He was just dive team and said he'd never get involved with the fire stuff. <laughs> But they pulled him in, so, um, but it's really great. That community and camaraderie was, I think, something he was looking for. He's become a pretty big pillar in the community. He will never admit it. I work with the uh, Arnold's Park and Okaboji Fire Department, and uh, we have a, a pretty amazing team of folks that work here in the center of all this kind of summer chaos that happens. We have a, a great team of individuals that uh, work uh, water rescue, we have uh, a search and rescue a dive team. I got involved just because of my expertise and, and you know, some of the things that my job uh, and career had, had taught me about mapping and, and GPS systems and sonar and there was, a, there was actually a drowning of a small boy, a uh, young, young uh, gentleman from, from Esterville. And uh, that uh, being involved in that case, being asked to provide some expertise, 
um, really kind of drove me into into that service. Um, he talks about uh, the first experience of being with the dive team on uh, that uh, that drowning, and that really changed things. I was pregnant then. You know, those first years, it was it was a little rough for the family. You know, small kids and very excited and passionate about anything he takes on. So when he took on the dive team and fire and rescue and all of that, he was very gung ho, which is amazing. But um, yeah, as all families that are sitting at home and they hear that pager, they get a little um, tense when it happens. You know, our, our divers do some hard things. They, they go after, you know, some things that a lot of people don't ever want to experience. So having a shoulder cry on at night, you know, when you get home, that's, that's important too. It comes home with them. And that's what he does. Um, a lot of hours at home, just thinking about things. It, it goes from training with, you know, fire and dive to how to improve water quality for, you know, the legacy that we want to leave for, for Iowa. What another great adventure with American Heroes Outdoors. You know, when we set these trips up and these adventures to capture stories, we never really know you know, where we're gonna go with the story or what we're gonna get into. You know, what we did know is we had, we're gonna have an awesome opportunity in South Dakota to chase some really, really nice deer and that we were gonna tell David's story and some of the deer that we ran into and got to see and, and chase and let alone the deer that David harvested was phenomenal. It's an experience that'll last forever. Join us next week as we head south to Sanibel, Florida to tour along with the Sanibel Fire Department and witness firsthand the devastation of Hurricane Ian. And we also get to highlight the heroes as they answer the call when devastation hits.